Hello there chums, it is I, Captain Steve, and today chums, I'm going to be showing you how to get PlayStation VR working on the PlayStation 5. I'm going to show you all the drawbacks with that, and I'm also going to show you No Man's Sky in VR on the PlayStation 5. Alright, so, so firstly the setup, so I have got No Man's Sky installed, and you can see there it says PS4 version. You can change the game version by pressing options and going to game version and changing it to PS5. But to play it on VR, you need it in PS4 mode. <laughs> okay, so in PS5 mode, VR doesn't actually work. Okay, so here we are. So this is what I've got all wired in at the moment. So there's my little VR box. I've just got to plug the headset into these two sockets here. It takes up those two. And around the back here, you still need all the wires connected that you did for your PS4. Which means it takes up two USB sockets on your PlayStation 5. So the USB sockets are down the back there. So at the moment, all my USB sockets are taken because this one is charging my joypad. However, I have found a small USB hub that I've plugged in so I can have my mic in as well as my charging dock for my move controllers and my PS4 pad. And you're probably wondering, why do you need a PS4 pad? Well, we're playing on PS4 mode. And guess what? If you try to use your PS5 pad, it doesn't do motion tracking, so you can't move your multi-tool. I will show you what it looks like in VR using the PS5 pad. It's pretty much unplayable though. Okay, so this is in VR and I'm using the PS5 joypad. Now, I would have liked to have hoped that it still would have been able to do motion tracking. I mean, it works on Astro Bot and pretty much everything else, so you would think it would work on the old PS4 games. No, <laughs> no it doesn't. So when you bring out your multi-tool, it just stays static in the middle of the screen and you keep your arm out the whole time, which you kind of are drawn to the focus of your arm rather than the actual distance draw. And it makes everything feel sort of slightly off key. And I actually started to feel a little bit of motion sickness. Now I don't get motion sickness, but this was not nice. I also felt that when I moved my head, it wasn't as smooth as on the old PlayStation 4. And also the graphical popping. A lot of the things in the distance would be it, it just didn't feel as good as on PlayStation 4 and I don't know why but the actual controller itself I tried making it so your hand disappears so but then the multi-tool is just floating up in the middle of the air right by where your actual um your compass directions are and again it's locked and fixed in place you can't angle it up and down so you can't blast where you want to blast with your mining laser or anything it's just mind-blowingly crazy i mean i'm fairly sure that when we saw the trailer for origins and next gen it said you know getting it to work for playstation vr well it does but you have to run it in ps4 mode and you have to use a ps4 freaking joypad so we'll get round to that in a bit but i could not scan flying creatures for freaking toffee now you have to actually import over your PlayStation 4 save to PlayStation 5 mode, which we'll get to a bit in, in a sec. But for now, I just want to show you the amount of wires, the amount of wires to get all this set up. So here we go. I'm back to the living room and back to setup of the devices and hardware. And another thing that I should mention is on the back of here, we've got two HDMI cables, one that goes from my PS5 into this little black box of wondrous magic. And the other one goes from this little black box of wondrous magic into the back of my TV. Now, if you wire the PlayStation 5 directly from the PlayStation 5 to the TV, you're going to get full 4K support. However, <laughs> this little box here, I don't know if it's the only version that's available for VR, doesn't actually give you the full definition range through to your TV. So it's actually running in less than 4K. I don't know what resolution it's running in, but I'll show you a comparison on Cyberpunk. You can see the icon for Cyberpunk just gingerly off the screen there. And I will show you a comparison between the graphical versions towards the end of this video. So stay tuned for that because it's a big graphical difference. So PlayStation 5 users, if you're hoping to be using PS5, uh, PSVR quite often, you're going to have to put up with, perhaps, running your games in a slightly lower resolution. Ah, uh, which I'm not. So every single time I finish playing VR, I unplug everything and stick it back in a drawer. Um, yeah, so I probably won't be playing PlayStation VR all that often on my PS5. And at the moment, with the amount of PS5 games out, it kind of is rather limiting. 
we need a new PSVR or we need a new one of these boxes that actually ups the actual resolution and lets you output it in full 4K. Okay, so if you boot into PS4 mode on your PS5, you go into your main menu screen here and you can just hit transfer to PS5. You would then need to let it do its thing, log out from PS4 mode, go into your PS5 mode, and then you can start playing on it. It's as simple as that. You don't need to use your PS4, you don't need to use USBs. They've made it really simple. Important announcement time. Right, okay, so your PlayStation 4 safe is nice and easy to transfer over to PS5. However, you can't transfer it back to PS4. So if you do want to play on VR, you kind of got to make that choice. Do I want to play on PS5 with enhanced graphics or do I want to pay, play on PSVR with a shed load of cables everywhere? I know what my choice is, but just a word to the wise, if you do transfer your save, I can't find a way to duplicate it or continue playing in the save on PS4 if you've already put it to PS5. Hopefully somebody in the comments might be able to help, but I can't. I am completely scuppered on this one, beyond my level of genie arse. Anyway, important announcement over. Okay, so another thing to point out with getting your VR to work is you're going to need quite a lot of different USB cables because you need to sync each of these devices with the PlayStation 5, which means that you need charging cables for that type of USB the big old chunky ones that we had on the PS2 and 3. That one, which is for PS4. And then the new one, which is, you know, obviously this, this new one. <laughs> okay, so I had to use this old cable that I had laying around for an external hard drive. Um, Yeah, which needed two USB sources. <laughs> and considering I had no USB sockets left on my PlayStation 4, that would have been fun. I needed that to sync up the two Move controllers. And then I had to dig out my original uh, USB cable for my PlayStation 4 and um, to sync the joypad. So, yeah, to bring you this video, I've had to use a whole spaghetti junction of wires. And, yeah, when it comes to modern, you know, appliances, you don't really want wires everywhere. Well, I know my missus don't. Uh, she'd kill me if she saw the house like this right now. <laughs> OK, so we're back in VR and this time we're using the move controllers, these like ice creamy type looking devices. Yeah, so I managed to get this paired, but I had to find a cable that's got the old USB type fitting. That was a freaking task and a half. Luckily, I had a hard drive to do it because I couldn't just put it in the actual charging bay and do it through there. Through there. Wouldn't work. But once you've got it connected, all is good and all works just as well as it did on the PlayStation 4. It's just a little bit finicky in getting them set up originally because you have to hold it down, register it with the uh, PlayStation all over again, get it center of your camera view, and you need the old camera. You can't use the PlayStation 5 camera. You've got to use the PlayStation 4 camera, which that you need an adapter, which I had to send off for from Sony, but they did send it over to me within about three weeks or so. So that's not too bad, and it was free. I don't know whether they still are. Okay, so got that working. Next! PlayStation 4 pad. So again, I had to find a cable that fitted this. And a lot of the cables that you get, they're not that good. You know, like the ones that you get with your phone charger and things. You need to try and find your PlayStation 4 cable. Now, I don't know whether you've got those, but I was lucky I bought one from CEX. And uh, yeah, I managed to get it paired. But none of the cables that I had around my house would actually let me sync it to my PlayStation 4. So I went to CEX, got a cable, <laughs> synced it, all working, lovely jubbly. And now it has got the track in motion. But you would have thought they would have done it for the PlayStation 5 pad, wouldn't you? Sony, you didn't make this easy. You've gone and effed it up royally. You seriously have. Because to play on the PlayStation 4 VR mode, you need a PlayStation pad. You need the Move controllers. You need a host of different freaking USB charging cables <laughs> to get them to sync and pair with your PlayStation 5. And is it worth it? I mean, you saw the pop-in just there on the actual asset that I was walking to and all the foliage on the planet. It doesn't feel like the PlayStation 5 is boosting the graphical quality through the little PlayStation VR box. It just feels like a pain in the freaking backside to get something that was previous gen to work on current gen. And I just thought it would be a heck of a lot easier. And I thought the quality would be better. So yeah, this brings us on to what I was saying before about the old um, uh, the cyberpunk test. I'm going to be bringing that up right about now, chums, anyhow. So here we go. Right, so 
I'm going to do two different versions. The first test is going to be through the PSVR box, and then the second one is going to be without. So here they are in comparison next to each other. OK. OK, well, you're probably thinking, Captain Steve, I don't see any difference between those two clips. Trust me, when I had it on screen, there was a noticeable difference. But now it's into Share Factory, I don't know what's going on, but they both look almost identical. But trust me, there is a big difference. <laughs> there is. Honest, when you're actually playing, there is a big difference. You can see track lines on the first one, and, and everything isn't as sharp like the minimap or anything like that. But for whatever reason, in Share Factory, they now look identical. I want to say a massive great big thank you to every single one of you watching right now, thanking you. And I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons that you can see on the screen here. Thank you, uh, Patreon. And a massive great big shout out and thank you to all of my YouTube memberships, thanking you people. And yeah, if you want to join any of those, check out the video description. I also have merch on my channel page. Be sure to check that out, there's something there for everyone. And I also have an eBay store where I sell 3D printed items. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Yeah, if I can make you guys smile, then yeah, that makes me smile. So thank you very much for watching, people. And yeah, if you haven't already, please hit a like. That would be fantabadozy. Heck yes. Or you could hit a subscribe. chicka pum pum chicka pow pow Yep, and if you've done both of those, there's always the notification bell, and then you won't miss the next episode. Heck yes. And on this screen here, YouTube or Google, the algorithm will try to predict what you might want to see on my channel. Hit one of those tiles, that'll be ace, or hit the join or subscribe. And until next time, people, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again, goodbye.